Hello, beloved. Balaam has a little trouble with his ass in our reading today from the book of Numbers. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Tuesday of the week of Pentecost, May 21st, 2024. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 139, beginning at verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 497 from Lutheran Service Book, Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord, with all your graces now outpoured on each believer's mind and heart. Your fervent love to them impart. Lord, by the brightness of your light, in holy faith your church unite. From every land and every tongue, this to your praise, O Lord, our God, be sung. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, holy light, guide divine, now cause the word of life to shine. Teach us to know our God aright, and call him Father with delight. From every error keep us free, let none but Christ our Master be, that we in living faith abide. In him our Lord with all our might confide. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, holy fire, come for true. Grant us the will your work to do, and in your service to abide. Let trials turn us not aside. Lord, by your power prepare each heart, and to our weakness strength impart, that bravely here we may contend, through life and death to you our Lord ascend. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Today's reading is from the book of Numbers, the 22nd and 23rd chapters. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, because thou hast mocked me. I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever one to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak, and when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam, and brought him up into the high places of Baal that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me. And whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today the Holy Church remembers and thanks God for Emperor Constantine, Christian ruler, and Helena, his mother. Listen to this from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Constantine was the emperor of the Roman Empire from A.D. 306 to 337. He was born about A.D. 272 in present-day Serbia. His mother, Helena, was not of noble birth and may have been only the concubine of his father. Constantine entered the Roman army and became part of the bodyguard for the emperor. Under Diocletian, the empire was divided into fourths, and Constantine's father was given charge of one part. At his father's death, Constantine assumed this office, and from it he gradually and with much conflict fought his way clear to becoming the sole ruler of the empire. In the process of acquiring the empire, Constantine had to fight many a battle. Eusebius relates that on one occasion, when his troops were clearly outnumbered, a vision was granted him, and Constantine heard the words, In this sign, conquer. The sign referred to was the Greek letters he and rho combined, the first two letters of the name of Christ. Constantine supposedly marked his soldiers' shields with this sign and proceeded to victory. In AD 314, he issued the famous Edict of Milan. For the first time, being a Christian was no longer a crime against the state. Christians' lives were safe and their properties could not be seized. Church buildings, for the first time, could be public edifices. Helena had enthusiastically embraced the faith before her son. However, once Constantine lent his support to Christianity, mother and son financially supported the construction of church buildings throughout the empire. 
Helena, particularly, was concerned with building churches connected with the events recorded in the Gospels in Palestine. She is responsible for the construction of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Constantine also saw to the building of what became known as Old St. Peter's, the church that stood over the graves of Peter and Paul in the Vatican from the 4th century until its replacement by the present basilica. Constantine is remembered also as the man who convoked the Council of Nicaea in 325 that rejected Arianism, the teaching that Christ was not true God. Constantine was baptized on his deathbed in 337, not uncommon at the time. His mother had died only a few years earlier in 330. Together they are celebrated as worldly rulers who sought to strengthen and support the mission of Christ's church on earth. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by your Spirit, you brought Emperor Constantine to believe and confess the victory of the cross and moved his mother to help in the building of many churches where your people could gather to receive your gifts and praise your name. Receive our thanks for them and for all benefactors who give generously of their wealth to further the work of your church in spreading the saving gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.